So in today's video, I'm going to be discussing something that many people might feel has already been covered ad nauseum, and maybe I've touched on this in the past, but this is an ongoing issue with 343. It's something they still struggle with today, and we can see that with something as recent as the launch of Season 3 for Halo Infinite. So many of us are well aware of how incompetent 343 is and all the horrible decisions that they make. We know this, we've covered this, it's been going on for years. But another issue with 343, which I've noticed more with Halo Infinite than in the past with Halo 4 and Halo 5, and that is that 343 is horrible with time management. They could be making much, much better use of their time. Time that they do have, right? I'm not not this made up time. Not, I'm not talking about extra time, like working extra hours. No, the time that they do spend on Halo Infinite could be put to much better use. And I mentioned season three of Halo Infinite. Now, with Season 3, we got three new maps added to Halo Infinite. Uh, one of the maps, Chasm, was a surprise map that got revealed um, closer to the launch of Season 3. But here's the thing. With the, th with the three new maps that we got added to the game, one of them is a big team battle map, and two of them are arena maps. But none of them look... None of them seem good for competitive play. I don't think players competing in Halo Infinite are interested with these new maps making their way into competitive. And just from me saying that, I can already imagine people saying things such as, Oh, it's a good thing that 343 didn't cater to competitive this time. They, they've catered way too much to the competitive crowd and and neglected the more casual players listen that whole thing is just bullshit it's bullshit they're not just c catering to competitive yo competitive players wanted a weapon removed off the map the mangler for like for months it, it might have been close to a year I, i'm not ex exactly sure the the exact length of time but it was it was a long time that competitive players wanted a weapon, a weapon off of the maps. And it took 343 forever to do that. They're catering to competitive? That whole idea is bullshit. If you think that, you need to rethink that because it's just not true at all. There's many things that, many things I could point to, other examples I could give that supports the idea that they don't cater, they don't just cater to competitive players. If anything, they're neglecting all types of players, okay? So get out of here with that. But anyways, like I mentioned, the three new maps we got for uh, Halo Infinite Season 3, one's a BTB map, and the other two, um, they don't look, they don't seem like good competitive maps. Now, Halo Infinite is the Halo game that launched with the least amount of maps had the least amount of maps at launch and 343 has done a horrible job awful job terrible like disgustingly bad job of adding new maps to the game especially considering this is a live service halo game like it's really bad they've, they've done a horrible job with it so you would think you know if you're gonna if you're gonna be spending time i mean if you're already if the game launched with the least amount of maps and you're doing, you're way behind on adding new maps, you think you would want to do things a, a little smarter. What am I talking about? I'm talking about, you know, making a map that is both good for competitive play and social play. I know that's, that's a novel idea. We've never seen that before, right? Right? We've never seen that before. No, no, we have, we have seen that before. Lockout, Guardian, uh, Pit, Narrow Sanctuary, Midship, you, you could just, and, and various others. God tier competitive maps and God tier fun casual maps. 
You can do both. It doesn't have to be one or the other, fun or competitive. You can fucking do both. But they don't. They didn't. Three maps and not one of them look like a good competitive map? Are you out? What the fuck? Like, like what the fuck are y'all doing at 343? What are you doing? You, you are behind on time. You are, way, the, you are way behind with Halo Infinite. Way behind. And you're still making mistakes like this? And it is a mistake. It absolutely is. It would make a, a lot more sense to make at least one of those three maps a map that is good for competitive and, and social or casual play. But it's like they didn't even try to make the map viable for... Uh, uh, any of the maps viable for competitive play. And listen, this is not me advoc This is not me saying 343 needs to focus more on competitive. No, I'm, d I'm just saying focus on, on both. You easily could have focused on both. Like, it, it, again, a map can be both good for competitive and casual play. But that's just one example of 343 wasting their time or not making the best use of their time. There's other examples to this. Uh, we can look back to season two. <sighs> Last Spartan Standing, the new game mode for season two. Um, not a very good game mode, by the way. I know some people say they like it, take each their own, but many people didn't. And this, the mode not being um, very good, um, that was evident to me after playing like one game of it. I played one match of Last Spartan Standing and I could already see that it was nothing special. And I feel like many people in the Halo community could have told you that that mode wasn't really good by playing it, by playing one match of it. And, and this isn't a case of me thinking the mode is bad and a ton of other people really enjoyed it. A uh, sketch at 343 mentioned on Twitter that it was by far the least played playlist in Halo Infinite <clears throat> and it got removed. A again, I and I'm sure many others could have told 343 that that mode isn't very good by just playing one match of it. And with 343... Considering the mode made its way into the game and it was one of the big things being added with season two, I assume that they they thought the mode was de at least decent. And that's a problem because I mean, if you don't have people at 343 th that can tell you that a mode like that isn't really going to stick then that, that's a problem because it, it was obvious that that wasn't a very good mode obvious to me and many others again i know some people liked it but again it's it's reflected in the population of the playlist that not a people not a lot of people really enjoyed it if 343 doesn't have people that could tell you something like last spartan standing is obviously not very good then what the fuck are we doing like what i'm confident a bunch of people in the community could have told you that it wasn't very good the moment they played it but you don't have anyone at 343 that 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 can tell you that or maybe they did and maybe certain people didn't listen i don't know what goes on there but either way it it's that's definitely an issue and so well 343 they spend time developing this new mode i can only imagine how much time that that, that took them because of how long it takes them to do some things that are very simple, like removing a weapon off of the map, taking them months. So I can only imagine how long it took them to make this new mode that's never been in a Halo game before. And, um, and I'm not sure if that mode worked with bots, but if it did work with the bots, then that's, you know, that's additional work that has to be done to get, you know, the bots to play well in that mode. And, um, yeah, the, the the, the playlist gets removed because not a lot of people are playing it. Yeah. Could have made much, much, much better use of your time there. That's just another example of it. But we got another example. The campaign in Halo Infinite. So from what we know, 
and you know just what it seems like look from the outside looking in and the fact that um, Halo Infinite launched without co-op it seems like 343 originally had no intentions of making the Halo Infinite campaign co-op it seems like it was just meant to be a single player experience. And again, I'm confident that is the case because we can see how the campaign was structured and the game didn't launch with co-op campaign. So yeah, I think there's a, a strong chance that 343 didn't intend for co-op to be a thing in Halo Infinite's campaign. But it seems like later on, 343 changed their minds and decided, you know what, we probably should do co-op um, for Halo Infinite's campaign, you know, kind of like how, um, you know, all the other Halo campaigns had co-op and a lot of people like co-op and it was, you know, pretty obvious that people would want it again with Halo Infinite. Now, them changing their minds on that, could, it could be because Joe Staten came along and he was like, um, yeah, we we absolutely need to have co-op in a Halo game. Or it could have been another reason. Whatever. But if it's true that Halo Infinite's campaign was designed for single player only, and then later they had to make it work for co-op, well, then they basically shot themselves in the foot. Now they got to go back and retroactively make this campaign that was designed for single player work for co-op as well, which would have been easier to do if you designed it to be played as single player and co-op from the very start. And it's also possible that if 343 did decide, hey, we are going to do co-op with Halo Infinite's campaign and they made that, de that decision from the very start, maybe, maybe we wouldn't have gotten this open world Halo Infinite campaign, which uh, the open world is the most bare bones and, and lacking open world out of any open world game that I'm aware of. And yeah, maybe they would have just done a traditional linear Halo game with co-op and uh, maybe Infinite's campaign would have been better for that. Who knows? So that is just another example of 343 mismanaging their time and, and making more work for themselves. Assuming that is true, that Infinite's campaign was designed for single player only, and then they later changed their minds to do co-op. And again, I think you can make a strong case that 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 is true. Now, another example of 343 making poor use of their time was it might have been the season three or it might have been the season two update. It could have been a drop pod update. I'm not exactly sure what update it was, doesn't really matter, but it was the one where they removed some fun campaign tricks and uh, removed the tank gun glitch, which a lot of people were having fun with, and they removed some skill jumps that uh, were possible on some of the maps and multiplayer. So yeah, they removed um, fun things, things that people liked, and then later they reversed those things and they added some of those things back into the game <laughs> so i mean that one goes i don't really have to explain that one um yeah they spent time removing the stuff just to add it back um pretty quickly actually they, they they were pretty quick to take that feedback from the community and and i think they added it added those things back pretty quick but the whole thing there is like, why did you need the community? Why did you need community feedback to understand that removing fun things is something that would piss people off? Like, it, it, it like, like, come on, we, we don't, you mean to tell me there's not people at 343 that were aware that, hey, if we remove these fun campaign tricks and we remove skill jumps from these maps, that's going to, you know, piss off players that like fun and piss off competitive players we we there's no one at 343 that was aware of that or or again or there was people that were just ig ignoring that I, that that's an issue so it's like another point i want to make it's like you know there was a lot of layoffs by microsoft including 343 343 343 was hit hard and i said this back when i talked about that 
how valuable were the people that 343 lost? I'm just throwing out that question because they make horrible decisions. They're unaware of things that they should be aware of. So, uh, yeah. How valuable were the people that 343 lost? I'm sure may may maybe there were some, but may maybe some of the people that got laid off deserved it. I'm, I'm not a dick for saying that. I know some people might feel that way, but no, there are some people that just suck at their job. And I, I don't doubt that there's those type of people at 343, considering they suck at making Halo. So, yeah. But, um, yeah, I think that's going to do it for this one. Again, this is not... This is an ongoing issue. Again, this is this is um, relevant with season three, like I explained. So, so again, it, it doesn't matter if I've already covered this or everyone's already covered this. It's still an ongoing issue. They are behind with Halo Infinite. There's still work that needs to be done, and it's like for some people, it. it some people are just sitting around, like, waiting for this game to get better. They're talking about, like, oh, you know, well, uh, 343, maybe when they add this or they update this, maybe it'll revive the game. Bro, bro, bro. There are so many people that played Halo Infinite. The game sucked. They moved on, forgot about it. They're not waiting for the game to be to get better. Halo Infinite could become the best Halo game of all time tomorrow. And it's still a highly unlikely chance that that's going to revive the fucking game. Even if it became better than the, better than Halo 3, better than Halo 2, the best Halo game of all time. If Halo Infinite became that tomorrow, it is still unlikely that it's going to revive the game. All right. First impressions are important to a lot of people. And 343, they, they, they're just so far fucking behind, man. They, ju they just are. And that is on them. I mean, you, you can say part of the blame is Microsoft. The The pandemic is also part partly to blame. But a lot of the blame also goes on 343. Okay? So that's going to do it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you on the next one. Peace out, everybody.